Hello, my name is Zachariah with Old Man Gaming, and you have decided to listen to another Snap Judgment review. What is a Snap Judgment review if you've never listened before? I think modern day video game reviewers get caught up in the fact that they have to complete the game or get through the main story or play large chunks of the game that they forget to really review whether this game is fun right off the bat and if it's going to be fun if you're a person who doesn't necessarily have a ton of time to sit down and play with it. With that being said, I only play for about 5 to 10 hours of any game I am reviewing uh, before I do a review. That coupled with the fact that I think video games are one of the most subjective forms of art, I do not give scored reviews. In fact, I will tell you what the game is on a whole. I'll give you the pros and the cons of the game in my point of view, as all reviews are, and then I'll tell you whether I personally will be sticking with this game outside the purposes of this video. So all of that said, real mixed bag today because we're talking about Payday 3 as you can possibly already glean from the footage that you are seeing. Uh, and I had a hard time with this one because the five hours was very hard for me to meet. In fact, I did not meet it. I got about four hours in. Uh, also, this review should have come last week on a Monday. Why did it not? Well, if you haven't been following, Payday 3 has had the most abysmal launch of any modern game in this year. Uh, with it coming out on Thursday, the 21st, um, and immediately being unplayable. Their matchmaking and their servers went down. They have no offline mode to speak of, uh, so you can only play the tutorials, and anything else would give you a matchmaking error. It remained down all through the night on Thursday. I went in to play it on Friday. Again, down. Could not play a Friday night or Saturday. That was my anniversary, and I want to stay married, so couldn't play it that day. Sunday, down again. Could not get in throughout the day. Monday morning, still couldn't get out in. Finally got in Monday night, and then Tuesday I was able to play quite a bit, and then I have also gotten to play it on the day that I am recording this, which is last Wednesday when you're listening. So, uh, it's very hard for me to do this review, because once I finally got in, I found this game to be one of my most enjoyable experiences this year. It's right up my alley. I love games like this. And uh, it kind of reminds me of Back for Blood or Left for Dead, but with a heist feel to it, which I like so much more than zombies. So that really kind of excited me. Plus the attention to detail here is almost second to none. The problem is I had to spend that much time waiting to play. And they've blamed a lot of their problems on their server company I yada 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 whatever I get it but at the same at the at the end of the day you're a multiplayer game you're launching a game with only a multiplayer the fact that it's down for five days when people have paid money for it unacceptable so have to say that and I'm gonna say it again in the cons but we got to get into it because I've got to figure out how to review this. So, what is Payday 3? Well, I only played very small amounts of Payday 2 because I didn't have any good online friends at that time, and I never played Payday 1. But Payday 3 is the wrap-up trilogy of this. The same characters come back with the addition of one new one, I think, and one from a Payday 2 DLC, so six total playable characters. Uh, and then what you do is you take on a heist. You get a quick idea of what the heist is while you're matchmaking uh, and then you're spawned into this world where no, nobody's the wiser of you yet you can stealth around into different areas some of them private some of them secure uh, you can kind of try and pickpocket security guards and even go in stealthy on quite a few of these heists where you can play it like a cat burglar you don't have to ever pull your gun out and fire which I thought was very interesting uh, and you can cut through a window, lockpick doors, hack security cameras, the whole nine yards. Um, the whole story plays out this way. You'll, I think there's ten heists in the initial game, and then there's two little cutscene comic book type things in between those to kind of tell this story, which is take it or leave it really it's it's pretty straightforward and there's not a whole lot of depth to it in my opinion i mean i haven't gotten super far into it but it feels very paint by numbers it feels like an excuse to do heists really which is totally fine i mean that's what we're all here for um once in the game there is a lot of interesting shooting if you go hard, but there's a lot of ways to accomplish the mission. Uh, there's stealthy, sub-stealthy, and then of course just going hot. And each way presents its own challenges and actually has a completely different route 
to it. Uh, stealing from the bank heist, uh, stealing from the bank vault without ever firing a shot is possible. But you have to stealth around, snatch key cards, disable security cameras, and eventually take a bank manager hostage without them ever seeing, without anybody ever seeing you, to open the vault to get in to get it, which is very interesting. Whereas going hot completely changes everything. Thermite gets dropped. You have to pull the thermite down and burn through the top of the vault. It's crazy. So you have two different, completely different ways to go at it, and a lot of the missions have this kind of. Uh, this kind of very interesting variation. Even missions where you're like you required mostly to go hot, uh, there's still a lot of different ways to accomplish it. Each one of these heists are very much a small open world onto themselves with tons of different little side things to do as well. Uh, with the bank to take the first uh, the first mission as an example, uh, there's a whole safe deposit box understory where you have to rifle through goods to figure out which safe deposit box a certain uh, cache of information is to get. Uh, there's a lot of stuff like that which I found really interesting in this game. Uh, and again, there is full stealth options in this one, uh, sneaking around, pickpocketing, uh, and the security guards don't actually just immediately start shooting you the minute they see you in a place that you're not supposed to be in. They'll actually walk you out. which. One of the things I found really interesting is in the areas where you get walked out, I would purposely get caught by a security guard uh, and then while he was walking out, nab his security card via sleight of hand. Like, there's stuff like that, little intricacies to this game that give each heist a lot of replayability. Plus, while there is only 10 heists, which we will talk about later, uh, those heists are very intricate, very in-depth, and very different. None of them have really felt exactly the same. Even the really shooty bang-bang missions are not missions that are necessarily a copy of previous ones. Uh, but really, that's Payday 3 in a nutshell. Like Once you go in, you do the heist, you get as much money as you can, you use that money to spend it on in-game weapons, uh, clothes, cosmetics, all of that stuff. Uh, to make yourself a little bit better to go into another mission. Uh, you also gain levels, which gives you a loadout. The loadout is a little bit interesting, which we're going to talk about in cons, but you get a specific kind of class that you can spec into, and then as you do stuff in that class, you'll unlock the individual little uh, uh, traits of that tree to then spend your skill points on. Uh, you don't gain experience from just doing missions though. You have to complete specific challenges to actually get new stuff. So if you do a mission the same way every time, you'll stop giving, getting experience from it. Uh, so you can't just grind things out that way. So let's get into the pros and cons. I like to go positive, so let's go to the pros first. Number one pro is the shooting. God, I love the shooting in this game. Uh, I really, I felt the gunfight. And they're cartoony, don't get me wrong. They're, you're going to be mowing down armies of cops, and the cops have comical powers sometimes. Uh, and you, can, you and the cops can kind of take a comical amount of bullets. But you're going to feel a weird, realistic tension to it that ramps up as you run out of ammo, as you have to reload in the middle of, like, a mob, uh, as you're also trying to accomplish a task or keep the cops from doing something while shooting. The shooting is quite possibly my favorite part, which kind of sucks because I like the stealth stuff, but I find myself almost wanting to get caught so that I can have that, oh fuck it, let's just shoot everything sort of moment in this game. My next pro has to be the open worldness of the levels. There's so much attention to detail in this. Like the bank job, there are windows to cut in to jump in through, there are cameras to avoid, uh, uh, different doors to trip, different powers to trip, to disable security systems. Uh, there's so many different things. Plus, there is a level of procedural generation to this. Um, I'll give you an example. There is a sprinkler system that, uh, while you're trying to burn into the vault with thermite, the cops might try and turn on to reduce how fast your thermite is working. And there is a turn off for that sprinkler system that spawns at like three or four different places in the building. And everything's like that with the key cards to the uh, the doors and which key card is required for them and where the power turnoffs are. Everything's in a different place every time. So the map is the same, but all these things kind of spawn in different places, uh, which I just love. 
I, I think it's so much fun. You, you could have it locked down in your head and then go in and then immediately realize, oh, the blue key card isn't where I thought the blue key card was going to be and my whole strategy is fucked. I think that's really cool and interesting. Gives you this le level of replayability no matter how many times you go into it, which is really cool. Uh, my next pro is just the options you have available to you in the heist itself. I mean, you can take human shields. You can let hostages go to negotiate with the cops in the beginning to give yourself more time to prepare for the cops. You can let the hostages go to take to get resources. Uh, you can... Uh, you, like, there's just so many ways to go about things, uh, especially when you add in the skill tree and stuff like that, that I really like the freedom of, like, how you're tackling the heist. It's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun and uh, really enjoyable. Uh, my final... Pro is kind of a weird one. I actually like the AI in this game, uh, weirdly enough. Um, so they don't always, like, they don't really operate on their own. They kind of follow you around most of the time. But they will shoot, they will kill, they will take some people out. They're competent with their guns. Plus, they will almost always revive you, which I found that really useful and helpful. And on top of that, and I didn't realize this at first, which I wish somewhere it was said somewhere, it took me a while to figure it out, but when you pick up the bags of money, you can only ever carry one bag of the loot. Uh, so, but you can throw the bags on the AI characters and it'll attach to their back, and then you can take it off them later and stick it in the car. Uh, this is also going to be a weird con later. <laughs> it's it's going to do double duty. We'll get into it in just a second. But I really like that the AI isn't completely useless in this. When I have played this by myself, which has been a few times just to get the hours in, uh, it's been fun. I haven't not enjoyed it. And uh, especially after I figured out that I could give my AIs bags and pull it off them. I wasn't doing as much running back and forth from the vault that I was at to the getaway car. It was a lot more fun, a lot more enjoyable. So let's get into the cons. Uh, well, we all know the number one con, but I'm going to save that. I want to do the duality of the last one. The AI. As much as it's, as nice as it is that they can carry the bags and you can take the bags off them, God, I wish that S Starbreeze would have put in that if I pinged something, the AI would walk over and pick it up on their own or throw it to a place with a ping. Because once you've thrown the bag to the AI and you go to the getaway van, the AI is running all over the place shooting. So to run up to them and grab the bag off them is like a insane Abbott and Costello joke. Like you're just constantly trying to nab it and they're moving to react to the po cops around them. Uh, so I wish that there was some way to control the AI just slightly, even with just the ping system that they've implemented, maybe attaching it to like, oh, I ping this money, this AI is going to pick it up, and then I ping the getaway car, they're going to throw the bag in there. That would be really nice and really helpful. Let's get into the biggest con, though, the matchmaking. It has been atrocious. It is terrible. Uh, five days for a multiplayer launch is ridiculous, and I'm going to just go ahead and tie in the offline mode. A lot of people have requested an offline mode and have been pissed at the, at the lack of an offline mode. My problem isn't necessarily the lack of an offline mode because, honestly... It's an online only game. It's meant for online co-op. The last one was meant for online co-op, so I get it. But if you're going to have an online only game, you've got to make the servers work at least within five days of launch. Like, you just have to. So, that's a little bit obnoxious beyond belief. Uh, an offline mode would have been nice, given the fact that the entire server crashed. And one thing that I do find very strange is that if I do go into a like invite only game with nobody but myself, I still have to match make. That that means like that's what I mean by no offline. Like if you are playing on their servers, period, no matter what, if answer buts, which is a little frustrating. Uh, I got this through Game Pass, which Game Pass is paying for a game through the subscription. Uh, but it still definitely didn't make me feel as angry as I'm sure the people who dropped 40 and even $100 for this game uh, were when they couldn't play for five days. Uh, my next con has to be the cartooniness a little bit. And part of me is okay with the cartooniness because it makes it fun, but like these heists, 
they would never be pulled off in real life. And I'm not even talking about like plausible deniability. I mean like you're robbing a bank, just mowing down cops, and you have to run to a van to dump the money and then run back to the bank to get more money to run to the van. Like, no way this happens. There's so many of them like this. Uh, plus, the cops themselves have all these cartoony special variants. And in fairness, they have to. You have to have those special attackers to make things interesting in something like this. But, like, there is literally a ninja cop that will jump you, jump kick you and, like, spin kick you a bunch. He doesn't even shoot at you. Like, and he's in, like, spec ops gear and just, like, appears behind you kicking you. It's very strange and over the top. Nonetheless, I kind of want to let this go. I did put it in the cons because of it, but can't not mention it. I do have one final con. This is a little bit of a nitpicky con, but I especially noticed this when playing with a friend. There are certain things where you feel like you could do them, but you can't do them unless you mask up. And if you mask up, you go hot. Like anybody sees you in the mask, it's go time, it's gunfire only. Uh, one of the things in particular, there are these windows in the bank mission where you can cut the, the, the lock on the window and then open the window and go into the window. However, if you do this, you have to mask up to go through the window. And if you mask up to go through the window, well then it's shooty time anyway. So why am I cutting the, the windows open to sneak in through there? I found that very frustrating and annoying. Like, there's just slight, like there's so much attention to detail in this thing and then they just get a couple of things like, why can't I do that? Uh, I remember me and my friend were like the window's got to be the way in and we couldn't get in without masking up the minute we masked up it was go time everybody has to shoot everybody so it was a little bit irritating there's a couple of moments like that in this that just that just frustrate it's just frustrate uh, I am going to add another surprise con to this one, and it's another little nitpicky thing. In a game about picking up and grabbing things, it's incredibly hard to pick up and grab things. I don't know why they made the hitboxing so small on actions, but it's small. Like, small. And, and I get the whole hostage one, because there's like a whole ability tree about it. Uh, but you have to like, and you have to yell at them and whatnot. So I get that, but like the picking up loot sometimes, like I'm trying to grab it and it's just not pointing at it. It's very frustrating. <sighs> you know what? I got to do one more con. I know this is a lot of cons. I don't feel like, I feel like I'm having a lot of fun with this game, but I got to say the cons that I see. Uh, the other two big cons that I have is the economy of the game is a little off. I don't have a problem with the skill tree or how uh, or how it works other than the fact that you have to do everything through challenges doing everything through challenges kind of locks you up so you end up with like way more skill points than you can even spend because you can only spend skill points in the tree that you're working on it's very strange to me so like I have like six skill points right now I can't use them because I've only got like two spots unlocked for the tree that I'm trying to do. It's very strange. In the same respect, the equipment, there's not a ton of equipment, so they double locked it. So you have to not only pay money for it, but you also have to have a certain player level to even get it unlocked, which I just don't see the point in double locking. Plus you end up with just huge piles of money that you can't do anything with. I keep buying masks and putting color on them just because I don't know what else to do with the money other than buy that and consumables. Uh, so it's a little bit frustrating. Uh, nothing to keep me from playing it. Uh, so whether or not I'm going to stick with it. Begrudgingly, I'm probably going to stick with it. I really enjoy this. The intense moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is great. There is only 10 heists. I'm not holding that against them right now because they're very in-depth, very well-done heists, at least from what I've seen so far, and they will keep me busy for a long time, hopefully until they add a slew more. I think that, like, overall... It is a really fun, quick game. Plus, it's one of those games you can pick up, play for 20 minutes, and put down. And I respect any of those games nowadays. Most games, you pick them up if you're trying to play under an hour, or just it's not even a waste of time. This game, it's like, oh, I got 20 minutes to kill. I'm going to do a heist. And you can get it done in 20 minutes. I really appreciate that. And I really enjoy that part of this game. So I think I will be sticking with it. I'm liking it. I'm enjoying it. I think it is still an affront how they launched and how that worked out. But hopefully they can come back. And I do 
appreciate the level of communication they had uh, and are still having with their fan base. Uh, there are plenty of, the, you know, the developers of Redfall have gone nearly completely silent after it was botched and there was outrage. So, like, I'm very excited. I, I'm very happy to see that they are actually connecting with people and trying to talk them through it. But that's it. That's my review of Payday 3, my Snap Judgment review of Payday 3. What did you guys think? Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? I know this is a highly contested game uh, as to whether it should be or not. Uh, so comment below if I got it right or wrong. And uh, you guys can also contact me on Facebook at OmegaMeDH, on Twitter at OmegaMe9. You can join my Discord. Links in the description below. Influence this and all my shows through there. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm going to keep watching and listening. I'll keep making them. See you guys next time.